live broadcast of the Advent Cable Network Nigeria, ACNN TV, the official television station of the Anglican Church of Nigeria. And right now we are in the Cathedral Anglican Church of the Advent, Life Camp Guarimpa Abuja. I must tell you, it's supposed to be a, a, a church packed full today with. Uh, by the way, I am Charles Philip Wakolam, and uh, it is a very great day uh, in the history of the Church of Nigeria as we are today having the retirement and Thanksgiving service of His Grace the Most Reverend Nicholas Oko, the Metropolitan Archbishop, Primate of All Nigeria Anglican Church and the Bishop of Abuja Diocese. Yes, he is having his retirement service today. And I must tell you, we are very happy for this great man of God, but with mixed feelings as well. Not just because we are going to miss him, but because um, a very limited number of persons have been allowed here because of the world pandemic disease flying all around so it's it, stringent measures are being put in place to curb the spread of this virus so it has affected this great day but even in the midst of that we are so happy today you can see uh, around you although the church is a bit scanty uh, people are still in very high spirits are still in very high speed. I must tell you that this man of God is most revered. A lot of good things that he has done. A host uh, of milestone achievements by him, both in and outside Nigeria. Right here we have a couple of uh, archbishops and bishops in attendance and other selected members i would like to tell you some of the milestone achievements but that's going to be later in the service i'd like to allow you to enjoy the service a bit uh, don't forget um, even outside nigeria prime Oko has handled offices that has given him that uh, most uh, iconic status in the eyes of the world as far as Anglican Church is concerned. Okay, um, I'll go back to the service now, but why not use our social media handles, Facebook, uh, YouTube, and maybe mostly Facebook to tell us what you think about the 10 years primacy of His Grace the Most Reverend Oko. I may just have to read them out later. Just tell us what you're going to probably miss about him, probably uh, what in his 10 years of episcopacy, what uh, you, you cherish most about this man of God. We cannot mention uh, everything, we cannot, we cannot uh, 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 mention everything about his great leadership, but just comment on our social media outlets, mostly Facebook, I might just have time to read out uh, some of your comments later. Uh, okay, it's Charles Philip Wakolam, and I'm going back to the service right now. Our service has started in earnest. Until I come your way again, please stay tuned.
song and to the going down of the same. The name of the Lord be glorified. Let the nations be glad and sing. For God judges the people with righteousness and governs the nation upon the earth. Thou art worthy, Thou art worthy, O Lord, worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power, and power, for Thou art come short of his glory let us therefore humbly kneel as we confess our sins to the almighty God together O oh God our righteous judge and merciful father we confess that we have sinned against you in thought and word and deed. We acknowledge that we are responsible for our sinfulness. Have mercy upon you. Upon us we pray you. By the love which you have shown towards us in Jesus Christ. Who for our sake died and rose again. Give us true repentance by the power of your Holy Spirit and enable us to forsake our evil ways and serve you in newness of life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Almighty and Messiah grant unto you pardon and remission of all time for the end of life and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. The readings are on the screen, please. Recognizing that God has forgiven us because Jesus, the Lamb of God, died for us. Let us adore him singing.
You have dealt well with your servants, O Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord. Your word is a lamp to our feet. Shall now rise up. The band will now lead us in praise songs. So we dance and praise God this morning. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God. You are God. Yes, you are. From beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. We'll sing you a God.
Lord Jehovah. There is no one greater than Jehovah, Lord divine. Excellent Jehovah, you are my beloved Lord Jehovah. There is no one greater than Jehovah, Lord divine. For is greater than Jehovah, Lord divine. lesson is taken from Isaiah chapter 52, reading from verse 13 to Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6. Isaiah chapter 52, reading from verse 13 to Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6. See, my servant will act wisely. He will be raised and lifted up and highly exalted. Just as there were many who were appalled at him, his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any human being, and his form marred beyond human likeness. So he will sprinkle many nations, and kings will shut their mouths because of him. For what they were not told, they will see. And what they have not heard, they will understand. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by man a man of suffering and familiar with pain like one from whom people hide their faces he was despised and we held him in low esteem surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering yet we considered him punished by God stricken by him and afflicted but he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities the punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. This is the word of the Lord. Chidium Ladamus.
Testament reading is taken from Mark chapter 16, beginning from verse 14. Mark chapter 16, beginning from verse 14. Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents and if they drink anything and they will recover this is the word of the Lord they gradual him it we have heard the joyful sound we prepare ourselves to hear the word of God.
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, by whose special grace we are what we are and hope to be what we shall be, thank you for everything. Blessed be your holy name, for you have done all things well. Be thou exalted, be thou exalted above the heavens. Your word is about to be spoken. Grant that your word will be spoken in power and be received in humility, that men and women may bow to your authority and glorify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I want to use this opportunity to give praise to God for all he has done for me, my family, and all of us from a very, very insignificant village that through the grace of God, what started in a very small way has reached the height it reached in the primacy of the Church of Nigeria. Let me first and foremost acknowledge the presence, I don't know, first in the, his capacity as a brother, the governor of Delta State and his dear wife, His Excellency Senator Dr. Ifani Okowa. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Chief Oshegu, you are welcome. We welcome all of you who have come from Asaba and from uh, Owalero and from Eka to this program. Thank you very much. Your presence here means that I am not stranded. Yes, uh, that uh, I have a place to go to. Hallelujah. And I want to also thank the members of Abuja Diocese. Since the St. Fort organized last, on the 1st of March, I haven't been able to worship with you because we are going around with uh, the primate elect and we are doing one thing or the other. And day before yesterday, we went to Lokoja for some consecration service. I appreciate everything, the sacrifice that you have made to appreciate the fellowship we enjoyed together. I want to let you know that I am very happy and with my family we rejoice. We came in in 2010, January 10, and on January 25 we took over. And since then, we've been going and coming in your midst. Nobody has hurt me. Nobody has offended me. You have forgiven me, I have forgiven you. If there is any other thing. So, those who gave gifts, the whole diocese, what you have given, and those who made individual presentations, and they are not here, Please let them know that from the depth of my heart and that of the whole family, we are very grateful. May God reward you handsomely. May your journey be by the power of God. And may you have victory wherever you turn. In Jesus' name. I want to thank our bishops who have been, well, it's not, by their, it's not their fault. They were selected from provinces 2-2. Two, two. Otherwise, they all wanted to be here. But because we want to be obedient to the government of the day, the Anglican Church cannot be seen to be disobeying government. So, we are here. And our wives, the bishops' wives, clergy wives, and so on, who were selected, thank you taking the trouble
to stay behind and come, even though the standing committee has been postponed. So I'm very grateful to see you. We didn't expect to have so, much, uh, so many people in the church, but uh, God works in a wonderful way, and uh, we are as many as we are. Thank you for coming. We are very grateful. We are very grateful. We are very grateful. Since the beginning of the ceremonies of um, the bye by us, it has been a very emotional and heavy, emotionally laden program. And when I look at it, I say, God, thank you. It looks like yesterday, but that is because God has given us good health. We thank him in Jesus' name. I went to Onicha last week. And I spoke to the people on a topic I believed should be my last message to the church, which is also what I spoke to them here on the 1st of March. And I'm going to say it to you today, and it is also the message that was prepared for the standing committee. It has been printed, and you will get a copy. Wednesday. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 28. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 28. Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you over the years to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. The message just to keep you reminded is divided into three. Take heed to yourselves, your own life, Take heed to the flock, that is the whole church, the congregation. And then take heed unto the wolves, that is the enemies of the church. These three take heed. Don't forget it. Don't forget. Your first responsibility as a Christian is to watch over your own life. To watch over yourself. That's why I say take heed to yourselves. So as a father, take heed to yourself. As a mother, take heed to yourself. As a leader in any group, take heed to yourself. So, mind what you are doing. Your thoughts, your words and actions. To be able to please God, you must remain blameless. Not about others, but about yourself. For first of all, take away the log that is in your eyes so that you will see clearly to remove the speck in the eye of someone else. So, as I leave you, I want you to take heed to yourself. For the scripture says, he that thinketh he stands, let him do what? Take heed, let his pause, so that you don't fall. The first precaution is to yourself. If you stand very well, then you will have no problem. We must show examples in faith to other people. We must restore 
to the church and to ourselves and society the fear of God. The fear of God is virtually disappearing from the church. That is why it is easy for people who are saddled with some level of leadership in the church to do certain things that are abominable. And instead of repenting, they recruit supporters to support them in order to oppose the clergyman. It's because the fear of God is disappearing. It was not like that before. If anybody committed any offense in the old time, the PCC would discipline the person and he will abide by that. But today, instead of abiding by the discipline of the church, he will recruit other people to join in disobedience and they will cause crisis and they will be shouting. They will go to internet and whoever can write better wins the case in the internet. It's not that he has a case. So, even if you win in the internet, even if you win the mud slinging, even if you win, you win in mischief making, you can hide it from other people, you can hide it from anyone, but you can't hide it from God. So my own advice to you and the message is that let the fear of God be restored so that you can say like Joseph, how can I do this great sin, this evil and sin against God? That's the fear of God. Let it be restored to the church. Let it be restored to our fellowship. Let it be restored to the BM groups in the church. So that people will obey God. Again, we need to be loyal and steadfast towards God. Let the Holy Spirit rule your heart. When the Holy Spirit inspires what you think and what you say and what you do, you will not lack the fear of God. And the fear of God will become like the wall fence that is built around the, the house. It protects the whole household from invasion from the enemy. The Spirit of God will tell you, don't go that side. You can't go there because you don't belong there. Let the Spirit lead you. Let the Spirit lead you. The Word of God and the Spirit will dominate your heart. Then watch your life and doctrine close, closely. Why? 1 Timothy 4, 16 says, By so doing, you will save both yourself and those who listen to you. It's very important. There is also a passage which has been my motto for a very long time, since 1971. Colossians chapter 1. Verse 4, verse, verse 10. Colossians 1, verse 10. That passage is in four parts. The first part has to do with pleasing God in, on a daily basis. Another part has to do with growing in the knowledge of God. Another part also spreading the message of God and the fourth part. There are four, if you break it down. Colossians 1 verse 10. That you may walk worthy of the Lord for all things pleasing to him. And when you follow this, Colossians admonition, you will not go far in error. The Lord will show you how to escape, how to live your life and glorify the name of the Lord. 
So as I leave you, I want you to follow this. This Colossians chapter 1 verse 10. 1 verse 10. It says, And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord. So your first assignment which is also to watch your own life, is to live worthy of the Lord. Are you living worthy of the Lord? Then, growing in the knowledge of God, which means you have to do everything to improve yourself. Some people are afraid that they will get to know God too, too much. And that will make them not to be able to do whatever they want to do. Don't be afraid. Sink deeper in the word of God. Don't be afraid. The word will only enlighten you and shed light on your life and shed light on the path you tend to follow. Again, another one that bearing fruit in every good work so, daily and to show that you are a child of God who is good by doing what is good to be salt to society and light to your generation. Again, growing in the knowledge of God. These four aspects, which means you will study which means you will do everything that will improve your knowledge of God, wherever you are, whatever you are doing. Everything must be done for the edification of God's church, not for selfishness. It's very, very important. As you take heed to yourself, there is also an aspect that has to do with relationship and your neighbor in the church. By the grace of God in the congregation, we are one another's keeper. And we qualify to enter the kingdom of God by the same, the same qualification, the blood of Jesus. Because the blood of Jesus is the leveler, is the only thing we all need to be saved, it's very important that you treat one another with honor, dignity, and respect. Again, God was not happy with leaders who did not take care of the sheep. He removed them from being shepherds. That is Ezekiel 34. So make sure you know that the work you are doing as a, an usher in the church, as a leader in the church, or whatever, that God is aware of your role, good or bad. Then number two, take heed unto the flock. Take heed unto the flock. That is to say, to the elders, overseers, bishops, Archdeacons, canons, reverend PCC members, synod delegates, standing committee members, and so on. Anybody holding any office at all in the church. Through you, the church is interpreted good or bad, for ill or for good. So, you paint Jesus, whichever color you decide to paint him. If you paint him red, Jesus will become red. If you paint him white, he will become white. If you paint him gold, he will become gold. If you paint him black and dark, that is the image the world will see. So please, as leaders, take heed unto the flock. Take heed unto the flock. To protect the flock of God from idols 
and idol worshippers, whether primitive or modern idols, and false teachings. So, you need to protect the church from false teaching. And before you do that, you must be sufficiently learned in the ways of the church, in the things of the church. You must attend Bible study. You must know the pattern of your worship life in the church. Some of us are Anglicans, but they don't even know who is a deacon. They don't know who is a priest. They don't know who is a canon, and so on and so forth. So, it is important that you make effort to know the organization you belong to so that you can make adequate contribution to its progress. Again, before you can defend the flock, false teachings abound today. False teachings. There are many people teaching anything that comes to their head. Anything. And it doesn't mean that anything is true. And it doesn't mean anything is right. For you to say, and I believe it strongly, doesn't make it right. You can believe a wrong thing strongly. So, wrong belief, strong belief. Strong belief for a wrong belief leads nowhere. Because um, theology informs action. What you believe is what you do. And if you do the wrong one, it's likely to lead you astray. You do the right one, then God is glorified. So please watch it. False teachers who are going around. And some people will say it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. What is your problem if that is what the man believes in? It does matter. It does matter. What has torn our church into pieces is this same careless teaching. Careless teaching. By the time somebody is in the church, a senior bishop, a senior clergyman, and is going about opposing God, teaching false teach things, rebuking God in a way, I attended a meeting of very senior bishops and they brought blacks around the cathedral and they carried placard. They were asking us to repent, Anglicans from Africa, repent because we are persecuting what we say, what we do amount to persecution to the homosexuals that we need to repent from the way we are, what we say and what we do and what we think and so on. That the future of Africa is homosexuality. They said it to us abroad, not here. I know that they are here, but God will protect us. Beware of people who have gifts but without character. They have gifts to perform many things, but they lack divinely inspired character. They lack self-control. In this generation, we have forgotten that self-control is a gift of the Holy Spirit. You have so many things, but you don't have self-control. And you claim to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. That is abomination. The Holy Spirit does not condone evil. And so cannot be the source of immorality. And so many people have ruined their marriages. And they say they are being led by the Holy Spirit. Avoid fashionalizing along canal lines. Fashion. Fashionalizing the church along tribe 
along ethnicity, maybe there is a difference. Some people, let me illustrate. The youth are a tribe. But Ijebu people are an ethnic group. So if you go along Yoruba, you are an ethnic group, um, a, a tribe. But if you refuse even to, to recognize that, and you go deeper and recognize only an Ijebu person, you have gone very far. Just like if you are an Igbo man, not enough for you to say an Igbo man. You say, no, 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 we want an Engwa man. We don't want uh, this. We want an Abakeleke man. We want an Enugu man. This word, if you ever say the Lord's Prayer, right from the beginning, it puts you into a community. It says, Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Everybody begin. Go. Our Father. Thank you. It's okay. From that first sentence, you are launched into a community. You are not alone. You have brothers. You have sisters. So when you come here and begin to discriminate, when you die, you will go to ethnic heaven. Yes, you will go to ethnic heaven. And if there is no such a place, they will put you outside. May the Lord deliver us in Jesus' name. The issue of language and social status. Do everything to promote the peace and unity of the church of God. To promote the unity and the peace of God's church. Don't make yourself a stumbling block to the church. As members of the flock, take heed to your interaction, interpersonal relationship. Some of us, the way we live, make others to regret their coming into this world. We even lack the restraint to say, God, apart from you, I am nothing. We do it so flamboyantly and disgrace the ordinary person. We must be conscious of that. That among sheep, the sheep in the church, whom God had given his life for in Christ, all of us are God's children. The privileges you enjoy are just nothing but privileges given to you by God. And through you, God can extend to other people. So please beware. The third session of my address, take heed unto the wolves. The wolves, by which I mean agents of the enemy of the church, Satan, the devil. They have an assignment, and the assignment is to steal, to kill, and to destroy, John 10.10. 10. These agents may be senior ecclesiastical officers, high-ranking church officials. In our generation, it is no longer credible to quote that so-so-so-so-so person who occupies so-so-so office in the church has said this. Because many of them now deny the resurrection. Many deny that Jesus rose. Are you going to follow such people? Because he bears a title? 
Many of them are encouraging people to change their sex. You are a man, you can become a woman. You are a woman, you can become a man. It doesn't mean that because you think you are a boy, you are a boy. You are probably a woman. These are the anomalies of our society. So they may be whatever title they hold, but please resist the devil and he will do what? He will flee from you. Otherwise, people will lead you astray. Much more so now, the influence of money. The influence of money. People, you have people who will not obey, they will not fall in line, they will not allow themselves to be led by anybody. They are the only ones who must lead. And you ask him, he said, God has told him something. So you are so good that you can see God. You are so good that God can speak to you. And this is what he has said to you, to do this type of thing. Our God is not a disorderly God. So, take heed to the wolves. First of all, identify the wolves. Identify the wolves so that you will be saved. Otherwise, you will be playing with cobra. And they will turn around and, and they swallow you. Not only that you should do so, you should watch your children. The company they keep, when they come back from school, the attitude they put up, you can even you can discover many anomalies from there. These evil people are wolves in sheep's clothing. They are hirelings, according to John's Gospel 10, 8, 12, 13, and so on. They peddle about heresy. Heresy, in essence, does not mean half all the uh, falsehood, total falsehood. It's half truth. They put truth on one side, put a lie on another side. And you see, you can get confused. Therefore, study like the Christians of Beroa to show yourself approved. A workman who has no need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. St. Paul cautioned the Corinthians about the wolves. He said, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers. False apostles, deceitful workers. So, for this future of this church to remain strong and to have a purpose, an objective, watch out for people who are false apostles so that they don't lead the church astray. Our Lord Jesus Christ warned us ahead of time, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Matthew 10, 16. You are to guard the flock against the wolves a major duty of the shepherd, of major duty of the overseer, is how to achieve this garden, the flock. We are to equip the flock with the truth of the word of God. So, there is no other way you can know the word of God. Attend Bible study. Attend the fellowship of the brethren. And when you gather, don't emphasize eating and drinking. For the kingdom of God is not food and drink. Just let the people study. Let the people know. So that when they go to other congregations, they will not say, hey, when I was in the Anglican church, I did not know anything. You see? But uh, the Lord has opened my eyes. The Anglican church, does it block blind people's eyes? If you blind yourself, 
You refuse to read, you refuse to study, you refuse to fellowship with people. You don't go elsewhere and be giving Anglican a bad advice, publicity. So read the word of God. Let the light of the Holy Spirit enlighten you so that they will not say that the evil, in, there is evil in the Anglican church. You know, they will say, they are in the Anglican church. They went and told the children that the creed is not in the Bible. Don't follow the Anglicans. They read the creed. The creed is not in the Bible. What a colossal ignorance. All the articles of the creed are taken from the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. But because these people are not knowledgeable, or they don't want to, it serves them well to discredit the Anglican Church and take members. But if you are strong and you know your, your, where you are coming from, they will not be able to, to deceive you. And so we charge our teachers, our bishops, our clergy, teach the people. Teach the people. Don't assign this thing to somebody who does not know. Teach the people. And when they are well taught, they will stand strong. And somebody coming to deceive them, they will resist to the last. The greatest weapon of the wolves in the Nigerian contest is the greatest weapon is tribalism and ethnicity. I should know because for 10 years I have been struggling with it. If I drink water, then they will accuse you of tribalism. Fortunately, my tribe does not exist in the distance that they will say, I have supported this, I have supported this, I have supported this. If the Church of Nigeria does not kill tribalism, it's likely to disorganize the balance. Completely. If the bishops fail to kill tribalism, is going to destroy our church. If the bishops themselves do not destroy ethnicity in the areas of diocese, because within the diocese it's not a homogeneous group, if you don't stand strong and enforce oneness, it's going to destroy the diocese and destroy the church around you. In a situation where people who are baptized, the same baptism, the same Holy Communion, the same this and that, we cannot accept ourselves. All because this one is not our tribe. 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 And so on. And then where it is your tribe, it is not belonging to our ethnic group. And a superior church officer is enforcing that type of rule and attitude. Good Lord, deliver us. As I round up, I look with faith into the future. I want you to join me to sing this song. The Lord knows the way through the wilderness all I have to do is to follow the Lord knows the way through the wilderness all I have to do is to follow 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 I will follow Jesus 
everywhere, anywhere, I will follow. For being here. I thank you for your steadfastness in the gospel. If we all walk well, we will see here or hereafter. God bless you and bless your families in Jesus' name. Lord be with you. Let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Let us pray in his name. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers. Endure your ministers with righteousness. O Lord, save your people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. O God, make clean our hearts within us. The collect for the fourth Sunday in the collect for Ash Wednesday. Turn with me to page seven of the program booklet. Let us together pray the collect. Almighty Father whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross. Give us faith to perceive his glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness, from glory to glory, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, you heard nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect forgiveness and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Collect for peace and grace. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom stands our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies. 
that we surely trusting in your defense may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. O Lord our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by your governance, to do always what is righteous in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. He is able, abundantly able, to deliver and to save. God is able, abundantly able to deliver those who trust in him. God is able, God is able, abundantly able to deliver and to see my God is able abundantly able to deliver those who trust we worship the name of the Lord, give him thanks and praise for a day of worship like this. Bless his name for his faithfulness. Our God is able, our God is mighty. Our God is the Lord God Almighty. He's the rock of ages. He's the one who has kept us alive. The reason why we're here in this place is for his own sake. But for Christ, but for God, we would have been consumed in the evil of this land. Bless the name of God this day for a day of worship. That we have the privilege to gather in his name, to call upon him, and to bring our supplications before him. Say, so, Lord, we are grateful. We thank you. We thank you for life. We thank you for provision. We thank you for protection. We thank you for your goodness upon the land and upon us, your people. Thank you for your church. Thank you for our leaders. Begin to pray now for the leaders of our church. Pray that grace will be released unto them. Pray for our primate who is about retiring, that the grace of God will minister to him. He will receive strength in retirement. Pray that the words he has spoken to us will bring life to us. Pray for him and his family, his wife and children, an extended family, that God Almighty will strengthen them. In retirement, they will not suffer shame. In retirement, they will be put to every form of disgrace in the name of Jesus. The Lord will keep him in sound health and sound mind. The Lord will make him remain in the faith all the days of their lives. Remember also our primate elect and our mother and ask that God Almighty will release grace upon them. As they take up the mantle of leadership in our church, the gates of hell will not prevail against his church in the name of Jesus. Talk to God about our leader, that God will grant him unction from above to function. To lead this church in the way of truth. To lead this church in the way of justice and fairness. Lead this church in the way of salvation that men will know the power of God to save, that people will be brought to the kingdom of heaven. Pray that the forces of darkness will not reign under his primacy. Remember also our church fathers, our archbishops and bishops. Some are here with us. Some are not here because of the situation on ground. Ask that God Almighty will bless them. In their provinces, in their dioceses, the missions of the church will prosper. God will provide for them. God will protect them. God will make their ministry fruitful in every situation in the name of Jesus. Remember also the priests and the members of our church. That the church of Nigeria will continue to work stronger in faith, in obeying the word of the Lord, and in faithfulness to God at all times. Pray for yourself as a member of church 
that you will not be the reason for the pull down of the church of God. You will not be used to pull down the church of God. Whatever your status in church, you will build the body of Christ. You will not backbite, you will not slander, you will not be engaged in more slinging. The glory of the Lord will be seen in you. The word of God this day says we should take heed to ourselves and to the flock of God committed to our church. I ask that the Lord God Almighty will answer our prayers. Lord, in your mercy. Can you begin to pray for our country in Nigeria as that God Almighty will take charge. Everything that has to do with our nation, the Lord will overrule. He will take charge and he will cause that we will live in peace and in safety. Pray for our leader, our president, Muhammad Buhari, and all those in authority at that level. Pray for our governors. Pray for those in position of leadership. That in the way they will lead, they will lead with the fear of God. Justice will reign in our land. Peace will reign in our land. Equity will reign in our land. In the name of Jesus, talk to God about our nation. As we pray for our nation, let us commit the situation on ground right now. The virus in town. Ask that God Almighty will keep it far away from us. The Lord will frustrate COVID-19. It will not come near us. It will not destroy us. And where it is ravaging lives already, that the Lord will stop that. In the days of old, when these people call upon him, when they humble themselves, the Lord says he will answer. And indeed he did answer them. The Lord is able to answer us. He is abundantly able to deliver and to save. Talk to God about our situation. The Lord will keep his church in the midst of this trial. In the times of this confusion, God will keep us. He will keep away this virus from our land. Pray for those who are already struggling with it in China, in other parts of the world, that the Lord will deliver them. Those who are bereaved right now, as a result, the Lord will comfort them. Those who have been quarantined right now, the Lord will give them his peace. Wherever people are right now, some are already afraid. Fear has gripped the hearts of many that the Lord will grant us grace to believe him at a time like this. Pray for our church. Thank God for the standing committee that could not hold. It is the plan of God. We receive it with thanksgiving. Ask that God will grant us grace. That on Wednesday as we do the valedictory and the presentation service, everything will work out perfectly. We shall not be endangered by every form of evil. The Lord will watch over us and will grant us a befitting service. We will honor God in that place of worship. The glory of the Lord will be seen in our assembly. This is the beginning of a new week and you made your week before God. Your journey committed to God. All that has to do with you committed to God. Are you sick and you are here present? Trust God for your healing. Whatever your heart desires, the Lord is faithful. If your desires are according to his own way. Call upon him now, he will answer. We begin now to thank God for answering our prayers. We thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. Just thank God. Bless his name. Whatever we call, whenever we call upon him, he answers. He neither sleep nor slumber. He is always listening. And he will do. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and give us those things which for unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Shall we say the grace together in fellowship? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us all, heaven. Amen. Can I hear a louder amen? amen.
Praise ye the Lord. On behalf of all of us, those who are here and those who are at home, we welcome you to this special service and we give thanks to God for everything he has done. We want to welcome in particular His Excellency and the dear wife, His Dr. Ifanye Okowa and our sister evangelist, Dame Edith Okowa, present with us from Delta State. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. We also welcome uh, those who have accompanied him, Chief Oshegbu and others. Welcome in Jesus' name. We welcome our Chancellor, our Register, and members of the legal team. God bless you for making the sacrifice. Uh, there's somebody here who we just sent him a text and uh, all the way from London he's here His Excellency Peter Obi former Executive Governor Anambra State <laughs> We are happy to see you sir and for taking the trouble all the way from UK to come back to join us in this service um, the issue is that the, we are trying to be in line with the season. That's why the church is the, what it is. And let me thank our bishops for remaining behind after the closure of the standing committee. Thank you very much. Your presence means that we are together. Thank you very much. You will not see coronavirus. <laughs> it will not come to you. It will not come to your church. It will, it will go back the way it came. In Jesus' name. Thank you very much. Welcome and welcome. Um, I want to use this opportunity to register our appreciation to the sub dean and members of his team who have pursued this work, I thought it might not just happen that they will be able to finish. But uh, don't you think they have finished? They have. The rest will continue. Yes. The rest will continue after the whole event uh, because they still have something to do. Ben, thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And bless your team. The members of your team. God bless you. Thank you. Choir, God bless you. After the service, we have a canopy out there. Uh, the bishops and the, all the guests will feel free to relax there and uh, a cup of water to light refreshment will be served in the canopy outside. Thank you. Praise the Lord. The choir will now lead us in praise songs. Shall all dance forward for our Sunday thanks offering.
you were God And you were not just be go You were not just a lie, Joe You are a great God You were God And you were not just a be go You are not just a lie, Joe you are a great God, we sing you are God, you are God, yes you are, you are not just Beagle, you are not just large, oh. you are a great God, you are a great God, we sing you are God, you are God, yes you are, you are not just Beagle, hey. You are not just large, you are a great God. Great One more time, God. I say, You are God, oh, you are God. Oh, you are not just big, oh, you are not just large, oh, you are a great God. And I know you are big, you are big, big, bigger than the biggest large. Large, larger than the largest grave. You are a great God. You, 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 you are big, 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 bigger than the biggest. Large, large, larger than the largest grave. You are a great God.
I say, who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. Listen, he turns my life around. He turns my life around. Hey, it makes a will where there is no way. My Jehovah has the final say. He turns, he turns my life around. A primate, his family, and the entire primate constituency will now dance forward for their thanksgiving. Special thanksgiving by the primate, his family, and all well wishers. Come and join me, leave Jesus high. Lead Jesus high. Come and join me, lift my Jesus higher. Jesus high. Come and join me, lift my Jesus higher. Lead Jesus high. See what has he done? He has done marvelous things. He has lifted me high. I will give him the praise. Ancient of this. Hallelujah to the Lord. Shout 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 hallelujah to the Lord. Oh yeah, shout to Zana to the Lord.
Jacob lifts you up to safety. May he send you his help from the sanctuary and be your strong support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept with favor your bond sacrifices. Grant you your heart desire and fulfill all your purposes. May we all rejoice in your victory and triumph. In the name of our God, the Lord perform all your petitions. Now I know. That the Lord will save his anointed. That he will answer him from his holy heaven with the victorious strength of his right hand. Some put their trust in chariots and some in horses. But we and you will trust in the Lord and in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen. But we are made strong. We are not prides. O Lord. Save this your servant. O oh Lord, save this your servant. Amen. And the family. And hear us when we call upon you. Gloria. To the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in this man, and never shall be all time. Thank you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And so, God Almighty, it is right and meet that we are giving you thanks today for what you have done in the life of your servant. Thank you, Lord, for leading him through both his episcopal and also premature years. You called him into this office, not human beings. You said, I have called you, not that you have called yourself. You led him, Nicholas. And your daughter, Ikasiobi. You led him out of Owalero into the military. And from there, you led him through in his catechetical to his ordained course to when he was ordained in Asaba. And from there, Lord, you lifted him up to become a bishop. And now, Archbishop 
also the primates. All these years and all these privileges you have bestowed on him for these years. May your name be glorified. May your name be glorified. We give you thanks and praise that through all his travelings are moving up and down. You do not allow him to die in accident. Traveling aboard and coming, not die in plane crash. He did not contact any disease. Glory, honor, the power be unto you, under mighty name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you, despite all odds, you have led him to the end of his uh, this primacy. He's disengaging, he is not retiring. As he disengages right now, Lord, he will not disengage into sickness in the name of Jesus. He will not get into death. He will live to testify your glory in the name of Jesus. He and his wife and family will enjoy more grace, honor, power, strength, health than before in the name of Jesus. I decree no evil eye shall look at you. Blessing of God will not elude you always in the name of Jesus. The favor of God follow you wherever you go. You have labored for the Lord. The Lord will recompense you. Your labor shall never be in vain in the name of Jesus. As you prepare to now go back home, to tell people at home, I've come back. You will not die on the road in the name of Jesus. Our happiness in your life will never go sour in the name of Jesus. You will not die suddenly in the name of Jesus. You will age gracefully in the name of Jesus. Your wife will age gracefully in the name of Jesus. None of your children will die in the name of Jesus. More peace, happiness will reign in your home. And we pray you, God, that Delta State will experience more peace and happiness. Thank you for your son, the governor of Delta State and the wife. Who are present here and others. Lord, as they go back, they will go back safely in the name of Jesus. None of us will regret coming to this occasion in the name of Jesus. And as we round up on Wednesday, we shall not up well. We pray for your servant, Henry, who will take over. As he take over, Lord, prepare him. Prepare him. Give him wisdom. That from where your servant stops, he will do greater things in the name of Jesus. With the dean and all of us, we shall work together. And children of now, we move from strength to strength. Receive our thanks and offering. But thou exalted above all the earth. Thank you, Father, for all the bishops. Thank you for all our wives. Thank you for all the church of Nigeria. And thank you for our country, Nigeria, that this scotch called coronavirus will not come near us in the name of Jesus. And the Egyptians will saw it today. We shall not see them again in the name of Jesus. Egyptian sickness will not be a portion in the name of Jesus. Throughout this ceremony, nobody will contact it in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and grace us unto us. Give us peace and happiness and lead us on and be with you and give you peace, joy, all the days of your life. Now and forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord be with you. I have seen the Lord's goodness, his mercy and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, I have seen the Lord's goodness. His mercies and compassion. Oh, I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, Lord, you have been so good. You are so good to me. Oh, Lord, you are excellent. In my life, every day. Oh, Lord, you have been so good. You are so good to me. Oh, Lord, you are in my life I have seen the Lord's goodness His mercies and compassion I have seen the Lord's goodness Hallelujah, praise the Lord I have seen the Lord's goodness His mercies and compassion You have seen the Lord's goodness Hallelujah, praise the Lord
If you are happy, do something for the Lord Jesus. Amen. for the presentation service will take place here on Tuesday at 4 p.m. All those who have role to play should please take note. 4 p.m. here rehearsal for presentation service. Thank you. Please rise for the doxology. The Lord be with you. Please kneel. As you go out into the world this new week, may the Lord go ahead of you. Those challenges that give you anxiety and pain, May the Lord give you solutions. Amen. The travel, the journeys you intend to make, the appointments you intend to keep, may you have a successful mission in the name of Jesus. All the challenges that keep you awake at night, may they all dissolve into nothing in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you all. A minute, please, members of the congregation. The packed refreshment for you is at the western door. Go through that door and collect your package. Bishops and other our guests will be at the canopy. Thank you. We'll draw him.
Way soon on Advent Cable Network, Nigeria Television, ACNN, is a down to earth and very revealing interview with the outgoing Primate of All Nigeria, Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion, and Bishop of Abuja Diocese, His Grace the Most Reverend Dr. Nicholas Oko, on achievements of his 10 year tenure. I might not call it achievement, but would rather say I have survived. Is the struggle with the revisionists, the people who are in the theological fast lane. My predecessor started the fight and we thought he will push the fight further, but he opted to retire. When I was brought in, I tried to do all I can. Reasoning, attending meetings, seminars, reading books, to see if I can accept homosexuality as a lifestyle, whether I will accept same-sex marriage as a way of life for the church. We have also asked the bishops to study and see if that is the way God ordained life to be and what becomes of the society. We came to the conclusion that it is not so. We have tried to resist the Western world beckoning on us to come on board. We in the leadership have been vilified. They said we are illiterate, we don't know what we are doing. Now, standing from the point where I am and looking back at the past years, I said, God, you have not let me down. I will hand over this church to my successor, an Orthodox Anglican Church. So, I would rather say that the ability to defend the Anglican Orthodox faith is perhaps the most important thing we have done. Most Reverend Nicholas Oko. Primate Church of Nigeria and the Can Communion. On relationship with the Canterbury, in quote, lead us not into temptation, end of quote. For me, 
The point is not where the headship resides. At the time, the idea was muted that Canterbury should remain the historical head, but we should also have chairman who will preside over the Anglican Communion, apart from the Archbishop of Canterbury, in rotation of about four or five years. But for me, that is not the point. If we follow the Bible and teach what it says, we are already one. Canterbury can be the leader if history allows, but the point is, lead us not into temptation. As I leave, my word for the church is, hold on, fasten your seatbelt, be vigilant, because false teachers are around, false doctrines are around, so fasten your seatbelt. Don't get carried away by modern Christianity. Modern Christianity is in a hurry, and their emphasis is on self financial breakthrough you fast and pray for financial breakthrough for promotion for money for anything that is just for you but that is not the emphasis of old-time religion the old-time Christianity talks about sacrifice service to the people service to God and suffering for righteousness amongst others these are the core issues that mold a person into a novel one most Reverend Nicholas Oko, Primate Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion. Watch out for the very revealing interview coming your way on HNN Television. the emergency meeting of archbishops and bishops of the church of nigeria anglican communion held on saturday 21st march 2020 at the st matthias house the national secretariat of the church of nigeria it was resolved that due to circumstances of false merger the specific directives of the federal government federal capital territory administration fcta and the christian association of nigeria can the Church of Nigeria Standing Committee meeting scheduled to hold between 21st and 25th of March 2020 is hereby postponed indefinitely. The retirement dinner in honor of Primate Nicholas Oko scheduled for Tuesday 24th March 2020 is equally postponed till further notice. The retirement thanksgiving service for Primate Nicholas Oko scheduled for Sunday 22nd March 2020 will go on as planned. However, the number of persons to attend has been reduced to 50. Each of the 14 ecclesiastical provinces of the church will be represented by two persons. Similarly, the valedictory church service for Primate Nicholas Oko and presentation of the Most Reverend Henry Ndokoba as the fifth primate of the Church of Nigeria will still hold on Wednesday, 25th March 2020. Accordingly, each of the 14 ecclesiastical provinces of the church will be represented by two persons. The following services, the retirement thanksgiving scheduled for 22nd March 2020 and the valedictory and presentation scheduled for 25th March 2020 will each hold at the Cathedral Church of the Advent Life Camp Guarimpa Abuja at 10 a.m. respectively. Please note also that the Global Anglican Future Conference, GAFCON, Bishops Conference scheduled for June 2020 at Kigali, Rwanda has also been postponed. The Church of Nigeria regrets all the inconveniences that these changes have caused our members, other Christian churches, government officials and other invited guests. The decision is in compliance with the directive of the federal government on the need to cope the spread of COVID-19 pandemic. While the church continues in prayers to God for the stoppage of this COVID-19 pandemic, congregations are encouraged to comply with the directive of governments on congregational worship and continue to maintain good hygiene. General Secretary Church of Nigeria, Venerable Gresham and Paul Dajo, announcer. Introducing a new way to watch a CNN 24 hours on your mobile device. Download the VM Africa app for Android from Google Play Store and then install. Open. Click on ACNN TV to be up to date with our news and other programs. Also available on the Apple App Store. ACNN, reaching the world with the undiluted word of God.
The word of God is God's instrument for deliverance. The Bible said in Psalm chapter 107 verse 20 that he sent forth his word and he led them from every destruction. All men that were of great generational impact, we are men who encountered God via the word. In this age of shallow Christianity, where many are no longer committed to discipleship, we need the word of God in order not to be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. For true Christian growth and maturity, there is no substitute for the word. Little wonder St. Paul wrote to the church in Colossians and said, Let the word of God dwell richly amongst you. The word of God is God. Bible said in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Join me and other men of God on Dick Station Weekly as we learn at the feet of Jesus. When next day is 2 p.m., Saturday is 11 a.m., and Sunday is 6.15 a.m., God bless you. Not that I mean to undermine polytechnics, they do it with your but university education is actually more valuable. What Shisha is supposed to do is to identify those people that are very, very slow in learning. When you discover your child is not performing well in a particular subject, it's for you to encourage the child and find out ways to assist the child. With respect to the school in which you graduated from, what I see in you and I respect is what you can offer. And this is what polytechnic education equipped the graduate with. There are no longer white collar jobs. They are nowhere to be found. The population is increasing on a daily basis and the government cannot provide all the needed jobs for the poor being youth. The factor that the patient has to get a prescription for. The reason is that when the patient comes, the patient gets a card and is directed to see the physician.